Here is the random walk, a procedural generation algorithm of randomness that in this case creates, well, small orange squares. Let's use our imagination and pretend that what we're seeing is actually the stone floor of an old temple or a cave in an RPG game, perhaps, and it's being generated right in front of us. Here it comes mixed with some Perlin noise and even some good old-fashioned randomness. I extracted the modes, as I call them, like random walk, random, Perlin, etc. into their own scripts. These modules only know where to play something, not how. By extracting the thinking part, I can now switch between them at will during runtime. This is semi-interesting on its own. The real-world application, I think, would be to first generate X amount of tiles with random walk and then applying layers of these other modules to change or alter different parts of the generated result. It also does some other neat tricks. But let's start at the beginning. A few days ago, I started writing some code for procedural generation. I didn't really have a plan when I started. I just kind of started writing something intuitively. It took me a couple of evenings, but I finally have something to show. So right now, it has four modes. We'll take a look at all of these and see how they are used. Please note that this is still a very early work in progress. It is not ready for any serious use other than looking at it drawing little paths. So I started by writing a tile generator. Makes sense, right? Can't do much until I write a script to instantiate the actual tiles. The generator instantiates the tiles. Each tile has a couple of connectors, as I call them and each connector can spawn a new tile at that position. These connectors exist in a list, and the generator sees only this list of connectors. It is blind to anything else, essentially. So the difference between where the tiles should be placed is just which connector we choose to instantiate from. I then just made it generate those tiles at random, or rather selecting connectors randomly. To add the random walk, I add an if case. If, if we want to do random, do x. If we want random walk, then do Y. And that got me thinking. You see, after looking at that for a while, it kind of dawned on me that the only difference must be what's in these one line if cases. Again, I have in front of me the code to spawn something randomly and the code for spawning it in a random walk fashion. So in a way, the random walk algorithm, if we can call it that, exists entirely within just a very few lines of code. Of course, random walk isn't very complicated, but still this was interesting. So I wrote a finite automata to allow me to change between random and random walk and remove the contents of those if cases. I now had a selector and I could add more modes if I wanted to. This distilled the random walk down to just this. Normally I would have tried to write a random walk generator as its own project, but now I have this system that outsources the method of sorting or selecting to whatever method we choose. And we can see those methods, what they really are, just very short sorting methods. Although it's not really a random walk like you would normally write it, the tile generator selects a connector to instantiate a new tile from. How we sort the list of all the connectors then will determine where a tile will be placed. So in the case of random, the random module will return a number between zero and the max number of connectors. When I separated these out, I took to calling them modules, by the way. Normally, a random walk walker would choose a direction at random, but choosing a random connector from the tile that we just placed is essentially the exact same thing. In fact, it comes with some benefits. Let me just step back a second before I get too deep into this. I am sure others have created much better procedural algorithms for people to use. And if you're just interested in the random walk, for example, it's pretty simple and you can find better tutorial videos on it. As you can tell by the title of this project, I had a completely different target in mind when I started working on this, before I got completely sidetracked by all of this stuff. We may yet return to this soon enough, or something in the same vein at least. We will see what I end up with. I wanted to share what I have so far which isn't much to be honest, and I'll keep working on it until I have something more interesting to show. Anyway, as I was saying, I mentioned some benefits to this method. Two effects of this, using connectors that is, is that if the random walker ever gets stuck by caving in on itself, it will typically fill in that area and then teleport out, jumping through other tiles like they weren't there. This is because, like I mentioned before, it doesn't just walk, it is going through a list of all the open connectors. If they are next to the walker or not, is not an issue. This is why I can have different modes and do both random walk and just random. It just processes the list of connectors differently. A normal random walker would need a block of code to check for available spaces and then jump out to create a new walker somewhere else, etc. The other thing is variety. These square tiles, for example, can only generate other square tiles, 
which is very boring. But on these hexagons, or the 3D tiles, each connector is wholly unique and can spawn any other tile. Different parts could fit together and have rules for how they do so, but that's more complicated and the aching to a wave function collapse, and we're not quite there yet. Instantiating tiles at connectors like this has some interesting aspects to it. For example, instead of knowing which other tile it's supposed to create next, or each tile knowing which neighbors it should have, the connectors all have a unique ID, and this database of sorts, a dictionary, knows the possible tiles that can be spawned from any of these IDs. Different connectors can spawn different tiles. It can have a wide selection of tiles to spawn, and different connectors on the same tile can have wildly different options. Anyway, all of this means that it can spawn any sort of mesh right now. I have hexagons, squares, and different 3D meshes as prototypes, and it generates in three dimensions. And a single tile could have rules for exactly which other tiles can be spawned from each connector. Red can only be spawned on the left, yellow tiles can only create blue tiles, or maybe stairs can only be spawned on top and the stairs could have a single connector which only spawns a floor, or whatever. Instead of flat planes, these tiles could be entire rooms, and sections of buildings, or city blocks, generating randomly and fitting together like pieces of a puzzle. It has many issues still, the code is kind of a mess and it's horribly inefficient. Largely because there is no control, it's being generated in a vacuum so to speak. The generator only sees connectors and has no perception of space. I haven't done much research on wave function collapse or other similar algorithms, but I believe they use a grid of cells. In order to collapse a cell, you need to know the entropy value which is affected by other neighboring cells. Right now, we are just instancing into the void, just connectors floating in the nothingness. In order to avoid each other, the pieces have to raycast to look for collisions, which is expensive of course. So the other modes and what they do, I mainly added them just to try to see what could be done with these modules. These could be used to add a second pass to the random walk. Let's look at the entire system in action. So like you've seen in the background footage so far, up in the top right corner we have a selector where we can choose our current module. Top left we see some data printed out, how many connectors there are, the amount of tiles we have placed, and the time that it took. We have toggles for instant generation, if we only want to see the result. We can ignore the breakpoints for now. It was a way to cause random module changes on the fly, but with the selector it's not really needed anymore. Update time changes how fast the walker moves, and max tiles is just how many tiles we'd like to place. By default, it always starts as a random walk. By switching to random, we can see how it fills out rather evenly across everything. Random distribution tends to become even. Back to random walk to give it some time. Let's try Perlin noise. Perlin is interesting. It tends to wash over the entire generation like a wave, sort of just thickening it up. Let's start fresh, but a little slower this time. The last mode is zero. A terrible name, I know, but it makes sense. It always returns zero. So zero will always be the first entry in the list of connectors, as in the oldest one. Zero always returns the oldest added connector. It's essentially moving from the start out towards where we are now. Right now it's a fairly decent random walker, but there are ways to go. I'll just keep working on this in my spare time and see where it goes. Thank you so much for listening to my rant. I won't be sharing this code as it is right now. It wouldn't be right considering its poor state. Hopefully I will have a much improved version in a few weeks or so, and I will update again once I have reached any sort of milestone.